Hi guys, I'm back again for episode 6. So I sort of nutted out how I'm going to make a pocket um, pocket filler template. Like a, It's a fairly big size, but I'm, I thought I'd do a couple. I went and um, did a few bits and pieces and I thought, no, I'm up to the stage now where I can start filming and show you guys what we need to do. This is a pretty good one, actually. So what we need... Sort of like nutted out. I thought I'll make one this size. It's sort of like they're one of those Tim Holtz, um, you know, divider pocket things. So I've just gotten a ugh, just a normal Jane Austen book page, and um, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But we we need to back it. So I thought it'd be nice to back it with something with a bit of colour so you can see it through and that gives it a strength so get a scrapbooking paper I thought this is the reason why I stopped doing it I thought it'd be easier to explain um, while I'm actually you know before I glue it on so it's a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and the size of these templates are going to be five, uh, 7 by 5 inches so you cut, was it? You go down, down to seven, which gives you two of the fives, and then this works out um, when it, if it's a twelve by twelve paper, including when you cut it off on the other piece, must have been a bit bigger. Um, so you get three lots of backing pages to it, and then this is what you're left with, which we will utilise, and it works out to be the same size. I'm going to put that on the so on the edges, sort of to to tie in that colour anyway so you will utilise them because it sets that width it's perfect size and then this um, that's pretty cool on the back as well you can always utilise it anyway so I'm going to be making one out of this book page so I'll put that behind it so you can at least get three out of a um, scrapbook page and we've all got scrapbook paper but I thought I wanted something with a fairly plain pattern because I'm probably going to be using these from my um, nature journals. So I've got this one. This is another one of these awesome books that I've got in my store, my stash. Oh, yeah, that's the bit, the bit that I um, cut off. And um, so cool. Love it. Really great pictures in this one. It's not a very big book. I kept aside, once again, I'll utilise the whole book. Um, there's about four, four pages that are, the pictures comes out like that. And so that would be really good to actually put in a journal. I particularly liked this one. So I'm going to probably put them together and use as a page. So there's four, and you do it like that so I'll keep them I'll show you so nice so that will go part and then the rest um, when you put a book together they don't always line up it's just the way books are made and even these bits I thought perfect for backing backing um, you know tags whatever so you, you utilize all the little bits and pieces because it's good paper so these I rather like these and I thought I don't just want to make one out of book paper like old book paper I'd like to be able to make one out of um, some of this and then I could probably back this in the slits with the book paper so I do the opposite opposite trick so the back of that one can be lined with some of this paper so I'll keep that aside um, I was thinking I got from these last tutorials here are the ones if you haven't seen how they turned out so cute um, the other little fox I've already someone bought one of my um, fox journals so I thought I gave her a little bit of extra and I put the other fox in there it was too cute not to share so they turned out really cute. So I'm going to put the three bunnies in the um, in that other one. But I thought, because it's going to be a nature journal, it would be 
really, really like it. I think the bunny one would probably look nice in the meadow. So either that one. Some of them may even have bunnies in it. Oh, that one's got a bunny. Yeah, I think probably that one. That's really pretty too. And that one, they're just gorgeous. So I might use that one and see if I can manage to keep the bunny in there. So, so you don't just have to use these. You can use these book pages as well. They're pretty awesome. So put that back. So I walk to the beach, Chris Gaskin. But most of most people have got nice books like this. You don't have to go out. You can go into thrift, thrift stores and buy them. And I've got this beautiful big one, Norman Arlet painting, bird painting. So um, you know stuff like that. They're just beautiful. Um, you know, like probably even take out that if you wanted to. To cut out the actual bird and then you've got because I, they're so big I love them they're so but they're so big and I don't know whether I can utilize see that's beautiful so you've got the background which is really pretty but then you can cut out the bird so that's a really good way of utilizing these really big books so um because I absolutely love them but I'm like I just don't know how to use them and the beauty of this book I mean, if you love them, some of them I really love. You can, um, I think it's made so that you can cut it out and hang it up on the wall. Um, but oh, beautiful, beautiful. Got that in um, a vintage bookshop. Vintage, no, uh, the Mill Markets in, Bal in, in Ballarat in uh, Australia. Yeah, they're sort of like vintage markets where they sell all old stuff. Okay, so I paid a little bit more for that one because it was so pretty. Now... What I'm going to do with that one. So we will measure this out. Um, actually, best way to do it because we're doing five by seven. And I want to keep that bunny. Have some of that on the side there. And the reason why I want to put it on the side is because I don't want to be cutting it. So. Have that there like that. If it's just normal um, um, book page, you just use your ruler, but this one you get to see exactly. Oh, I'm gonna be really like this. It almost has a Van Gogh look about it. Okay. And then I've got all these other extra bits on there that seem almost evil that you're cutting through it, but you know that will make a nice bookmark or something like that. We won't ever get rid of it. Or even in those um, those book page books, you know, this sort of thing, except for the one with the square in the middle um, would look nice. Okay, so five by seven inches, and it works well with this because it's such a full, um, get something that's a full picture and has got a bit of detail in it. So, because once you stick the tags in, you tend to lose it a little, lose what's actually in there a little bit. So if you get something that's, you can still see the small pit, small elements of the picture. Okay. I mean, hopefully that butterfly will still be part, part of it you can still see. What was the other bit? So I'll put that aside. Then what we do is you. measure a quarter of an inch uh, just see the bunny's butt 
really lightly, really lightly. A quarter of an inch either side. Okay. Now, from the bottom, we've got. Actually, I could probably use this as well. You can use your rulers. That works, but um, so from the bottom, I am starting going two inches. There we go. So I draw a line two inches. Oh, we're having to save that butterfly. That's cool. And then two inches. Beauty of this. You can line it up exactly. Probably didn't need to do that line. And then another two inches. And you should be left with about an inch on the top because I didn't want it to be two inches on the top. just wanted it to be, um, have a little bit of a space on the top. Oop. Try not to break. Okay. Now, okay, so quarter of an inch either side and from the bottom start, draw, draw a line two inches, then another two, so three lots of two inches. Then you get your ruler and knife and cut and go like that from where that line is. So don't go further than that. If you want a border, then get your other one. Where are we? Here we go. One. It's actually quite pretty on this, doing it on the paper. Now, you go down on, that's why the line's required, about a quarter of an inch. I'm a bit of a just, she'll be right, mate, type of girl. So just go down about a quarter of an inch. But if you want to measure it, do it with the ruler. That's a good thing too. Okay. So go down, so make sure you go down and not up. Um, when I was doing with the template, originally I did a line up and down, but the gap, where is it? This template, here it is, see? Um, where is it? Yeah, I did the line up and down, but it was a bit big. Have a look, the gap, opening gap is just way too big. So. Just go down. Now then fold it upside down and just fold it over. Fold it over. There we go. Fill in the other gap. Fold that over. Make sure that's completely cut, unlike this. One of these things that quite simple to do it's just once you've made one you'll probably make a whole heap like I'm gonna because it's a good a um a good size for a journal look at that it's so pretty now me eraser I'll do the eraser thing later. Um, because this is a bit shinier paper, get your bone folder and maybe push that down a little bit. I don't have a bone folder, so because it's a bit shinier on the paper, I use my blue stick, but it, it does need to stick down. So I'm going to use a bit. And that might be sticking up because when you slide things in there, you don't want it catching. Okay. Okay. Using a craft glue or fabric tack or whatever you've got, a quick drying glue is good. Okay. 
um, make sure it stays down. Okay. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Now we'll get our eraser. And rub out that. That's why you needed a really light line. You don't want to tear the paper. But if you get the um, ruler like what I had, you probably wouldn't even need to do the line. But it's always good to do a line. Oop, careful. Okay. Let's see. Now. Oh, the goopers. Um, what I do next is... I think I did it with that one. I'm going to do it both ends. So, just do a bit of a quick thing on this end. That way it gets, tries to get a bit of everything. And that way you can be as messy as you like, it doesn't matter. But on the other side, not so much. So try and, this is easier to do while not to put together this is an optional whether you want to do this or not I always like inking and I, because this is a little bit of a shinier paper I'm getting distress ink rather than just a stress oxide because the oxide is um, a bit more chalkier which is good on paper but if the paper's a little bit shinier, the ink is a bit better. Okay. There we go. Need to be able to see whether you... have got it. Pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now I'm just wondering... Yeah, that works pretty good. So, what we do now... And I'll do my other one while I'm here. Do I decide to do the um, there we go so if you do that you get highlights writing so you'd want to make sure that the writing is uh, not swearing at you so um, or put the green behind it I'd rather do like that and it makes it stronger too I think so, and the same with this one. So, what we're going to do with that, so I've pre inked that one as well, is, where's my, here it is, I'm going to put some double sided tape all the way around. This is none too exciting for you guys to watch, but. Oh well, necessary process and I am going to sew, you don't have to sew all the way around but I think I would like to, to do that. Um, I'm just going to probably do a straight stitch on the pattern one. And it seems really weird that you do it on there, on the top, but you need to. So you've actually ultimately have got four um, places where you can tuck because that's going to go into your book and if you glue here, here and here, you'll have a really big space and you can probably put a really big long, maybe a piece of paper to, so they can write or a big tag. Um, yeah, so I'll just do this one. Okay. And you can do this with glue. But I think when it's paper on paper, and because the sides, um, because it starts from there, it's not going to interfere with um, the things that you put in. So double-sided tape is good. I just get this from a local $2 shop, reject shop, dollar store, as they say in America, or you'll probably get it from Michael's or Joanne's. Wish we had a Michael's store. 
in Australia. That would be good. So I sell Jane Davenport stuff. Um, Jane Davenport, even though she's Australian, we the only way we can get her stuff is via her website. Whereas it would be nice just to go into a store and be able to buy it. Yeah. Some stores are starting to get her things, which is good. Yeah. It's the only part about this. It is sticky stuff. And if you've seen my first uh, episode in this series, <laughs> you've got to get it on right. It's so frustrating if you don't. Now, there's no right or wrong, is there? Now, you. So I probably recommend going from the bottom. Yep. Really got to be careful, oh, especially the paper. This makes me nervous. Oh. Okay. That's the only downside about double sided tape. You get the first bit in, and the rest should follow. I'm hoping. If not, we can do some cutting. See, it just it does it to me every time. So annoying. Okay. know why it does that but at least it holds it open see how it's just perfect size that's what I mean maybe I should have learnt my lesson from last time and use glue because it doesn't always sit properly there you go okay see so we're going to have a bit more luck with this, I think so. Uh, oh, someone gave me a tip on my last one to put a little bit of double-sided, um, to put a bit of glue on there, and that gives you a little bit of wiggle room. There we go. See, people give you tips. They're only good if you use them. So if you use double-sided tape, we'll see how... This goes. Ugh. This is a bane of my existence, this stuff. Remember when I was doing scrapbooking all the time and drive you nuts. Okay, okay, I can't remember who gave me this tip in one of my comments, my viewers. So thank you. So hopefully this will work. Put a bit of glue on there which gives you allows you a tiny bit of wiggle room we are hoping because this is a bit more slippery makes sense okay. now I think this paper is a little bit slipperier so I am hoping it will be a bit nicer. And be nice to me. Well, it works a bit better with this because it's a nice thick book page. Thank you, whoever did that, suggested that, because it does work. It's good. So it's all these little tips that um, that's what I love about the junk journal community. People are so lovely in the tips that they give. And no one's out to help each other, which is good. There's so much you can learn. You never stop learning from each other. 
and um, you know, I do this because I really enjoy I love teaching people how to do stuff but I really don't mind getting people to teach me stuff you're never too old to learn anything never too young to learn anything okay so there you go that's a good tip so what I'll do with these is I'll give it a bit of a and ink. So this is really nice. I love how this has turned out. So pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Helps when you've got beautiful paper. Whereas this one, oh, so annoying. Oh well, what can you do? You might know what you can do. You can learn from your mistakes. And remember the tips before you do it. That's what I can do. Now, so you've got yourself a. Okay, now I'm going to pause for a second, do a bit of sewing around the outside of that, and I will be back. Okay, back again. Once again, my sewing machine's given me a lot of grief. I don't think. It liked the double sided tape. So if I was to do it again, <laughs> um, so I, I've pretty much taken it out. So it's given me a nice hole pattern. <laughs> um, but I don't think it'll go anywhere with a double sided tape. I think that'd be pretty good. Um, and I did a pretty pattern on that side, but then it was giving me a bit of grief on this side. So what I might do, I don't think it needs anything else. On this one see how many adorable bunnies we can fit in a, a pocket I think I'll put that on the bottom actually put that one, that one there now him he'll go on the top that one on the bottom because it's a bit of a, a sticky glider and then this one here, tuck it in, there we go, hide his so good, put that down a little bit more too, um, I still want to get that rabbit, so you would put that in your journal, um, maybe put it a little lower, whatever, and you'd be able to even fit, if you glue that down, you be able to fit another one underneath there. I like it. I love how that turned out. So that one's going to be for those bunnies. If I make another bunny journal. I've got the bunny journal cover. Maybe I should make this into it. But this, I think, needs a little bit more decorating. 20 eight minutes oh, I might have a little bit of time maybe 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 so this is where this extra where's this bit there's another backing so this is where this extra piece would come in handy and because since this didn't go so well maybe I can go tear like the raw edge Yeah, ink. When you have that raw edge, it just soaks up the ink very nicely. And then, actually, I might use this glue. Do it very quickly, and that brings out the um, the green backing. In the back of the book. Okay. This is where I'm doing it this way. And then you cut it after. That way you can see exactly. And then ink. 
I like that. It gives it a real sort of classic book look, doesn't it? Hmm, very nice. So, do we keep this or do we put one on the other side? What do you reckon, people? Um, I think we put one on the other side. Okay, do the same thing. So go this way. Right. And then I've got, um, depends what you want to use this for. I've got some, where are we? Some Tim Holtz ephemera here. I think that goes really nice. Or you can use some illustrations out of your book pages. Maybe I can probably use some of the leftovers. I don't like that, but I'm jumping in the gun. Okay. So when you make these, um, like this tutorials are for the purpose of making stuff up in bulk so that when it comes time, um, sometimes making your journals, you can just grab things at hand. So glue that down. Oh, I hope I'm in frame, people. Just get a quick redo this. I might add a little more to it off camera, but you're getting the drift. See, sometimes when you do sewing and it doesn't always work out, there are ways and means. I think it just did not like the double-sided tape. So I don't blame it. Okay. Right, my little sewing machine got to treat it a bit, a bit more respect, I think. Now, works hard for me, my poor little sewing machine. There we go. Oh, I like that. I like it. Gives it a really nice classic vintage look see it's start the thread starting to come out so I may end up putting some on the bottom and top as well see how I go I quite like that and then you can put your bits and pieces in there and the only trouble is when you've got some with the big bulky bulky tabs they're better to go in the corner tuck spots so that's why I opted for the bunnies, I think, because only one has got that. We need the more flat. See, that's really cute. So you could probably put something nice on the bottom, I think. I think that goes rather pretty with that. Or put all these little leftover bits. Like that. I don't know, I think that one. Okay. Just quickly do this. And then I'll have two of these tags for you to have a sticky at. The beauty of um, the one that you make with just the paper, there's not a great deal if you've got a really nice book page there's not a great deal of decorating you do on the front but then the good part of using book pages um, is that you can use it and it ties in with any journal so put that one in here just do the two bunnies for now and then put the little bunny in here Still may do that on the top, but there we have it. Our two little book pages. I think they're rather adorable. It's gone 34 minutes, sorry people, but you know, they are cute. Um, cuteness takes time. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until the next episode, I'm, hmm, I'm thinking I want to do maybe some fold up by fold um, using some more book pages. 
um, yeah, so maybe some bifold things. So, okay, guys, thank you very much for watching. And until the next episode or next tutorial, I've got to do a little more work on my art journals. Um, I've just sold a, uh, a Fox journal cover, so I've got to do some more. Okay, guys, until next time. Bye.